Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to, or welcome back to, another episode of Haunted Gaming R. On this episode, I'll be reading in a word-for-word style a Sonic the Hedgehog 1 creepypasta called, simply, Sonic Endless. So, suspend your disbelief, grab your red sneakers, and let's run on into Sonic Endless. I am what you'd call a very loyal gamer towards classic franchises, such as Pokemon, Mario, Zelda, and especially Sonic. While many modern gamers scorn at such titles and favor more graphic and violent games, such as Call of Duty and Dark Souls, I've always pretty much been stuck to the childhood classics. As a huge Sonic fan, I look forward to playing every new release, good or bad, despite the reviews of the public who usually dub a Sonic game as terrible, because it did not meet up to any of their expectations. I usually had very little expectation to save my potential disappointment upon going into a new title, of course. And I like the games for what they're worth. However, I feel that, and can agree with some people, that the franchise should cease and Sega should move on. Not just because I feel it's lacking. No, not at all. It is because of something I witnessed and came to understand two days ago. I was sitting at my laptop, adjusting my Yu-Gi-Oh cards for a club I go to on Mondays, whilst watching a few videos on YouTube, until I came across an official teaser for Sonic Boom, Fire and Ice. While I played Shattered Crystal and was sped up on the cartoon, I had little knowledge of the Wii U version due to lacking such a console. Only the opinions of others filled me in, telling me that the game was worse than Sonic 2006. I couldn't help but feel people were over-exaggerating as usual with these games. After all, I'm part of the fan base and I know how my kin act. Feeling intrigued by the teaser, I wanted to play a Sonic game. Since it's been quite a while due to my busy life, I hardly ever get to play games nowadays, and went to get a classic Genesis emulator and a ROM of the original game. While I was able to get the emulator easy, getting a ROM for the original Sonic 1 was a task within itself, due to many ROM sites being taken down because of copyright infringement which was a a growing issue to play games presently. Site after site, I eventually began to become more frustrated, cursing under my breath, until I soon came across a site that seemed a bit... shady. Knowing full well about malware and viruses from sites like this, I hesitated until I came to knowledge that my antivirus would handle any attempts of infection. I clicked link to the site, Nothing wrong so far. My antivirus didn't notify me and instantly blocked the site, so I shrugged it off and attempted to download the ROM. Same result as my antivirus did not reject the download. It's probably safe, I thought to myself as I extracted the file and started up my emulator. The game started up with the normal Sega logo and the Sonic Team text. However, when it reached the title screen, no music played. Hmm, must be a glitch. I thought, whilst dreading the idea I would need to try and find a better working ROM, until Sonic appeared out of the title ring. His expression wasn't the usual smug and cocky persona. No, it was depressed and lacking in energy. I got angry and cursed loudly at the fact that I got a hack instead of the original game. But I swallowed my pride and decided to try it out, hoping for a good trade-off. As I pressed start, the game instantly threw me into the first level, with the title card saying, No more. No more of what? I asked myself as the title card moved, revealing the stage. And to my surprise, it was Green Hill Zone in a different light. Green Hill Zone was dead and lifeless. No, it wasn't filled with blood or gore or some, you know, stuff from a crappy ghost story. It was lifeless in the sense that nothing or nobody was living there, to the point where the hill was abandoned. 
The level was silent and lacked any background music, period. I drew my gaze to Sonic. Sonic himself stood quietly, looking at the ground, almost like he didn't have any vigor. Just like in the title screen. I noted how bizarre his hack was and proceeded to move Sonic, realizing he didn't pick up any speed and only seemed to hobble forward. At that point, I noticed I was on zero lives, which was impossible, normally, because in the original game, if you got zero lives, it was a game over, instead of giving you one last chance. The zone itself was empty, lacking any badniks, rings, or obstacles. The plant life was very still, and had a color palette to imply that they had rotted away from neglect. As I moved Sonic through the abandoned green hill, which was a time killer due to how slow he was moving, I eventually came across my first trail of rings, which were positioned in such a way that they made out letters, words even. Let it end. I read this sentence and sat and thought as if there was some symbolism involved in this hack trying to give me a message. I moved Sonic past the trail to another set of rings forming a word. I can't take it. Who was leaving this trail behind besides the hacker who had made this game? Was this another one of those horror story fan games? Was it one of the other characters with the death wish? I really didn't know and had to keep moving to find out. Suddenly I jumped as Sonic turned his head to look at me. I noted that this hack was acting like it was aware. Although a part of me wondered if the game and its titular character was indeed trying to tell me something. I gulped and continued to move Sonic to the next formation of rings, fearing what they will say next. They hate me. This concerned me to whom was saying these sentences. I was half expecting a jump scare at this point only for the game to continue in its own definition of normal, as I moved Sonic to the next ring sentence. They ruined me. I started to get a big idea on who was saying all of these messages. Sonic, of course. I knew the series hasn't been doing terrifically since Sonic Adventure 2. In some cases, Sega were trying too hard to make the next best game, only to miss the fans' expectations. But... Maybe this was just some troll's idea of a funny yet depressing bash. Or was Sonic himself trying to send me a message? As I proceeded to move Sonic across the stage, the ring lineup of messages became more and more depressing. The rings were forming sentences such as, I don't want this. And, let my legacy rest. Two, no more games. It was apparent that this was the cry of Sega's fully successful and once beloved mascot wanting his adventures to end, so that people's memories of him would not become tarnished by every new game. That was poorly received due to high expectations that wouldn't be able to be met. In the case of some games such as Sonic 06 and what I've heard about Rise of Lyric, poorly optimized games that were rushed out for the sake of Christmas sales. I was starting to feel depressed and kept trying to tell myself that this was just a sick prank made by someone who looked down on the franchise and its fans. But alas, my feeble mind believed in the paranormal. Eventually I reached what was supposed to be the end of the stage, that looked like the boss location for Green Hill Act 3. Yet there was no sign of Dr. Robotnik, who of course would show up to challenge Sonic at the end of every zone. Yet. Why didn't he show up this time? Could Robotnik have also abandoned Green Hill like every other living creature to leave Sonic all alone? Sonic slowly sat down in the dead center of the screen and slowly began to sob. He sobbed for what seemed like a good minute or so until he got up, looked at me once more before running to the right which led to a bottomless pit. He then jumped into the pit and did his usual death animation. Nothing gory or too detailed. Just the little sound effect with Sonic's dazed yet surprised face as he shot up and down. 
The game then alerted me that it was a game over. But instead of the words, game over, it said, please be over, before cutting into a blinding mix of colors, occasionally flickering through images of Sonic's decline over the years. Be it game titles, concepts, or certain characters. After all this, it cut to black and displayed Sonic falling from the top of the screen before hitting the ground. While he would normally have survived such a fall, he hit it with a crunch, unlike the usual title breaking sound. As I sat there wondering what would occur next in this bizarre yet symbolic ROM hack, I jumped in surprised as the words, Gold influences the selfish, appeared on the screen in the same text font as Try Again in the game's bad ending. The game then reset after that screen, going through the exact same logos, and when it went to the title screen, Sonic looked even sadder than before, as if he had gone through the exact same sequence over and over again. Curious, I played again, going through the same sequence three or four times. Each time the game returned to the title screen, Sonic looked more and more depressed, with a few bruises mixed onto his face. After seeing this, I hastily shut down the game and sat in horror after it clicked in my head to what this was and what it meant. Sonic was trapped. Trapped in this eternal cycle game after game. Forced as Sega's little marketing gimmick to fill their pockets with cash. The concept, if you think about it deeply, is sickening if you consider this is an all too real interaction to reach out to a fan. Akin to that of a defenseless bear, forced by some sick bastard to perform for their own gain. All that happened, the empty green hill, the messages, the suicide attempt, the images, all symbolism to what Sonic wants but cannot have due to the fact that he's still alive because Sega wants him to be from monetary value. I didn't tell anyone else this story because I knew no one would believe me if I tried. Yet, when I see a new Sonic game or other media, I sit and think about what I saw through that game and hope that Sonic would finally be able to rest one day from his eternal torture. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, was Sonic Endless. A Sonic creepypasta about corporate greed and things that should have ended long ago. Tell me what you think about it in the comments, and also leave suggestions for future episodes if you're so inclined. Other than that, I'll see you next time on the next episode of Haunted Gaming R.